Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the summary for the day of 754 for the 18th of March. We're going to start off with the frontline changes report. Well, today we have four frontline changes. The first one is over at the Sivas front. So at the Sivas front, there is just this uh, Joe location uh, of Ukrainian forces getting hit by the thermobaric rockets over at this very position. This position, this position, this, 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 this position. So anyway, it's over this tree line. So as a result, uh, this invalidates the entire chunk of this uh, territory that was previously claimed to be under Russian control. So which means that the Ukrainians have taken over this area here or the Russians have never taken over this area. So this is the main frontline change over here in the Sivas front, over at the Bilhorivka in the Luhansk region. So the next frontline change is over at Olivka. So at Olivka, at the, at the FK front, there is a frontline change. The Russian forces continues uh, to expand on a daily basis at Olivka. Looks like the Ukrainian uh, resistance over at Olivka has been collapsed. Uh, so this effectively, uh, with this frontline change, this basically almost matched what the Russians have claimed, which is the entire of Olivka. And as such, I have declared Olivka captured by the Russian forces officially. Uh, previously, we did like, declare ones based on the claims of Raiba. However, this cannot be corroborated until right now, which means that it's not true. And uh, the actual cra uh, capture is actually right now as per claim, not claimed, but as per mapped by Deep State UA. Deep State UA have not conceded that Olivka is lost but based on their mapping there's basically nothing left I think this is there's no buildings here as well so this is the entire of Olivka has been captured by the Russian forces so, and, and uh, one last frontline change is over or not one last is the next frontline change is over at Luhiske so uh, so this is at Zaporizhia front. This is at the Orykiv sector of the Zaporizhia front. Luhiske is over here and uh, Russian forces allegedly had uh attack uh in this area here uh, previously or rather we have mapped it in a way that it was like a confirmed that luhiski has under russian control based on not confirmed but russian claim that they are they have luhiski oh my freaking god sorry i just woke up and uh, and and there is actually coincidentally a joe location of uh, Russian forces evacuating from uh, the eastern outskirts of Luhiske due to attack from FPV drone. So the Russian forces are moving in this direction. And uh, this actually confirms that the Russians is at least on the eastern part of Luhiske. At least this part. We cannot tell if they are actually on this uh, central and on, on the western part of Luhiske. But the fact that they got FPV drone strike at that location shows that they are actually at least on the eastern part do lend some credence uh, into what the Russian uh, mapping is. So, and the last one is just nearby over at Verbove. Uh, this is just a disclaim by the Ukrainian side. Uh, the, their mapping no longer claimed uh, this far in terms of their grey zone. Their grey zone is now along this tree line. So, and uh, clearly, this kind of uh, situation clearly is the uh, realistic. This, uh, this shoe over here clearly this is unsustainable so yeah i dub the rush uh, the ukrainian forces is here they just do, uh, refuse to acknowledge that the russians have taken over this area over here uh, the, maybe the fact that um the russian forces did not want to put forces in this area here because it's pointless the russian forces is pushing along the main road they're pushing up this three these two three lines and they did not want to put troops here and the ukrainians are not there as well they just put it as a gray zone that's a very very possible possibility that uh this is the case oh my god i just wake up my english is broken so okay uh that's all for the frontline changes report uh and then we go into the strategic and tactical reporting um uh, so we're gonna uh, for those that um, no, don't want to watch the full sip rap, as uh, just want to, for the newer viewers, situation report, which is the meaning of, which is the short form, sip rap, uh, sip rap for situation report, uh, is the situation report of the entire war. The entire war. So this is not uh, no uh, highlights for the, the yesterday's actions. No, it's not like the kind of, it's a full report. So we will go through all the front lines. And uh, for those that are not interested in certain front lines, just keep the timestamp. It will be added. So 
This is the Kherson front, Zaporizhia front, uh, Donetsk front, Adyevka front, Bakhmut front, Sivas front, Kremina front, Sviatove front, and Kupians front. And then we have the Belgorod front and maybe Sumi front, if there's any action there. So uh, do just skip if you don't want to go through the whole information, but I will go through the whole information regardless. Um, and I've done that since day one. So uh, probably the only YouTuber or content creator or news reporting that has been reporting from day one, every single front line. So yeah, so if you don't like it, then uh, yeah, I cannot destroy my product. Anyway, uh, over at the the Dnieper River region, that is the Dnieper River, uh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry reported that uh, there is Russian attack on Ukrainian position on the left bank of the Dnieper River. So the left bank is the southern bank. Um, so we're not sure where is it. So we are, we still put it a crinky. And uh, there is also uh, another drone strike. So this time around, yet another attack against another Ukrainian vessel along this uh, port here. Uh, this time around, another ship. I think it's a petrol boat. Uh, that was hit. Not uh, not fully sure what ship. So this is actually in the southern part of uh, Mykolaiv. So anyway, that's all. Uh, it's not really uh, something significant. Uh, I don't think the Ukrainians have much use for these kind of boats. I, like you know, not like the Russians are going to invade or something. Or oh, they already invaded. Oh, okay. Uh, over at Zaporizhia front, uh, this is Zaporizhia city, and uh, this is the Zaporizhia front. Uh, this is cut off into three sections: Kayamske sector. Orkhiv sector and Kuyapule sector uh, based on the main town uh, in the namesake around here. And the Russian forces are operating and attacking Shibaki, uh, Robotine, Verbove, and uh, and then there is a, a shelling over at Stetnokhus. And uh, this that's all we know for this current situation uh, as well as of course your location over at Lukiske of Russian forces semi-corroborating the frontline change that we have done yesterday. So claiming that the, so the eastern part is pretty much confirmed to be under Russian control at least, and the Russians are are putting pressure on the Ukrainians. But uh, there's not much news regarding this area here, so uh, there's nothing much to really talk about. There's nothing happening over at the uh, Huaypule sector. We move into the Donetsk front. So this is the Donetsk front. This is Donetsk front, and uh, there is this is the Velika Dvorska sector, Voleda sector, and the and the Numerica sector. So the Russian forces are reportedly, reportedly attacking Staromayoske, Ukrainian forces counter-attacking at Uruzaini. Uh, Russian forces are clashing with the Ukrainians at uh, Vudian. Russians are attacking Novo Mihailivka, attacking Yogivka, uh, and Krasnohorivka. And then we have uh, under Ukraine, sorry, not Krasnohorivka. Oh yes, the clashes, the Russians are attacking, Ukrainians are also counter-attacking. And then there's a few weird reports coming from the Russian Defense Ministry. They, they name dropped Shataske as well as Maximilianivka. <laughs> Maximilianivka. Sorry, what did I say? What did I just say? So, so okay, never mind. Uh, Maxim Maximilianivka. So anyway, the the this too is weird because like like the Russians have not even captured Zoleta Neva. How do you go to Shataske? I have no idea. So they did. They just simply dropped the name like there's no. So they inflicted losses. So probably it's just artillery strike. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's how the problem with their reporting sometimes. Then uh, Maximilian, Messi, Maximilianivka, um, Maximilian, Maximilianivka. Yeah, Maximilian. This is uh, Maximilian in Russian. So, or Ukrainian. So the Russians probably is pushing in this direction that caused them to uh, name, uh, to drop the name uh, Maximilianivka. So yeah, it could be the case. We will continue to monitor and see if there is real progression uh, in this area here because this is a bit weird. And uh, Krasnorivka, there's some news. Finally, we have some reports. Uh, there's some detailed report from Raiba, the Russian source. And uh, the, the, the description is that they have been trying to advance uh, in the southern part. However, they are unable to. They are stuck. So they are trying to push out from this area here. So they're trying to push out. However, because the Ukrainians have actually sent in a lot of reinforcement into this area here, I think it's a similar situation as per in the Adyevka front. <clears throat> the Russian forces cannot break through. They are kind of, kind of stuck there. So uh, they are now stuck there. And uh, we will continue to mo monitor and see how this progress. But still, this entire battle of Krasnohorivka is not acknowledged by the Ukrainian side. So it could be stuck because it did not happen. <laughs> There's a possibility. But of course, we do have confirmation, at least 
uh, the Russians have landed uh, the forces in this area here prior. So in an attack in this way. So we have confirmation the Russians did enter in the southern southern sector, but there is not there's basically zero evidence of uh, big battles in the southern part and there is no more no details regarding the, those for soldiers that landed there's no follow-up so uh, that's a bit com com complicated you know in that sense so um but there is a possibility also because of uh operational uh discipline the forces that is fighting in the Donetsk front seem to be really disciplined uh generally speaking in terms of uh footages <laughs> like we have the same problem with uh, Novo Mihailovka. The battle of Novo Mihailovka, despite the Russians capturing, right, like, you no, know, this is like 30% of uh, Novo Mihailovka, there's actually not much footages coming out from this uh, battle as well. Uh, and, um, yeah, so the, most of the, the, the video footage that come out is from the Ukrainian side showing them uh, smashing uh, Russian uh, armored vehicles that is actually heading up. Uh, into the south and the western part of Novo Mihailovka, they are getting hit by Ukrainian uh, artillery or ATGMs or drones. But yeah, there's no not much videos coming from Novo Mihailovka itself. So that's actually a uh, yeah bizarre, if you ask me. A uh, drone location of a Humvee getting hit by FEV drone uh, just south of Georgievka. So confirming the Ukrainians are dead. That's about it from the Donetsk front. Uh, over at the DFK front, uh, so the at the DFK front, the Ukra Ukrainian forces got triggered by what I said yesterday and tried to launch uh, a bigger attack, a uh, counter-attack uh, in the center. And you can see that Ukrainians are counter-attacking uh, from the Novo Kal Kalinove region into the northwest of Krasnorivka, attack at Novo Bakhmutivka towards uh, Stepove, Vodaychi, Semenivka, Olivka, uh, Tonenke, and the Russian forces are allegedly attacking uh, towards uh, Ochetaritine, uh, Novo Babotivka, basically, I think it's the same one. But Daichi, uh, Olivka, uh, I, I think this is what, what is this again? <laughs> I drew so many arrows, I cannot see. Uh, okay, uh, there's no attacks at Semenivka. Okay, okay, so so let me move this in. And uh, Tonenke. Ah, shit. I realized I, 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 this is, it should be like that. Okay, at Tonenke. Uh, and then uh, there is an attack at uh, Nevelsky. There is supposedly an attack towards Netelove and uh, towards Umanske, probably coming from the Vodian region uh, over here. And and uh, all this uh, is... I lost my train of thought. So anyway, the, the Ukrainian forces are attacking, the counter-attacking, they're very triggered by what I said yesterday. And... Uh, However, despite the Ukrainians supposedly pushing, uh, you can see so many arrows uh, in this area, the Russians actually took Olivka. So I do not know no, all these reports you know, make sense or not because the reports coming from the Russian Defense Ministry, they name, they name dropped so many places. So, yeah, but no, yeah, it is what it is. And the, the Russians are still pushing. So we will continue to monitor and uh, see how this progress. Uh, all these... The name, name, the the dropping of the name of Umanske, you know, Detelove is a bit weird. So I'm not sure if this artillery strike or this is actually an assault by the Russians, because they sometimes mix the mo the uh, mix both of them together. Uh, so no, <coughs> suddenly my voice is gone. So the CIA. Uh, so yeah, that's all for the uh, ADF front. Uh, over at the New York front, there is only fighting reported at a uh, Pif. Uh, sorry, I tell the CIA to stop uh, disturbing my throat. <coughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, Ukrainians are attacking in this direction towards Mayos, and probably that's about it. There's nothing much over in the New York region. Uh, I think there's nothing over in the central part, right? Yep, nothing. So uh, that's all. Uh, we move into the Bakhmut front. In the southern flank of the Bakhmut front, uh, there is no more fighting ov over the Ozerenivka and Kudyamivka again. So yes, it, it is yet another scam. Uh, however, we do have a dual location of uh, artillery getting striked by a Lancet uh, just on the western part of Bilo Bilohora. U Russian forces are still attacking Klishevka and Andreevka. I start to believe this is just a scam as well. No, they have been talking about attacking this area here. Uh, no, they're under attack or whatever. So For so long, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry mentioned about it. But 
uh, there's no change. There's no frontline change. Uh, there is an interesting geolocation uh, that is showing the Ukraine forces in the Russian controlled territory. Uh, this is by military summary. But the drone, the I look at the footage, uh, it, there's snow. So I got a feeling that this is a dated image and uh, dated footage, sorry. And uh, over in the area of Chastifia, uh, Lancet had hit a Tesla, Tesla, Strela 10, you know, Strela 10, uh, anti-tank um, uh, vehicle. So yeah, there goes another surface to air missile system. Uh, Russia, and uh, and then uh, in the northern flank, we only have reports of fighting reported at Ivanivsky. And uh, that's all from the Bakhmut front. So we move on uh, to the Severs front. At the Severs front, there is actually no fighting being reported. The only thing was the Joe location, as I mentioned, the Joe location report of Ukrainian forces getting hit by the atomic rockets. But that also confirms the Ukrainians actually have control over the entire forest south of Bilohorivka. Uh, so that actually makes the situation in Bilohorivka looking, looking even more secure. So I can't remember who, who was the people... Uh, who was the source that claimed the Russians attack uh, in this area here and captured all these forests? I didn't. I do need to track back. No. So this is something that I also you know like to advocate advocate people to do is that if something that you you learned uh, is is invalidated by uh, another information is contradicting, uh, and you find that very often, and you probably have only a few sources of information, uh, do check. And uh, if you realize that uh, this person or uh, this source or, or this news outlet always give you false information, the well, best suggestion is actually to stop following. Uh, the uh, that's the key. Unless the in the report they are you no know, a bit more uh complete uh reluctant. Uh, they just say that there's a possibility or there's you no know, that that is still alright. You no, know, they they are reporting based on the best that they know. But if they say that something's very sure, you no, know, they like for example this case if they map it in. Uh, like as if it's a real, it's a sure thing. Then uh, you no, know, it 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 does deserve some you no know, consideration. Uh, and there is a lot of false information in this Ukraine war, um. So, yeah, just be careful about that. You no, know, and always clean up uh your soils, your diet. You no, know, your information diet. Always refresh, remove those that always give you false information. Uh, that's also how I end up with only a few main source uh, of information because there is just. Too many sources that uh, sometimes you know give me false information that that you know I have to correct on the map and that actually you know uh, just I have I just cannot trust them that's, that's all so uh, fighting report at Turney uh, the fighting report at uh, at this criminal criminal front has returned again it's Turney again I'm not sure you no know, what to read of it there's a three day pause you no know, fourteen to fifteen then the next one is eighteen so we'll wait and see. Uh, Tony is yet another those are uh, forever fighting but none but very very minimal change uh Seattle Bay front is quiet we move into the Kupian's front so at the Kupian's front there's fighting reported as in Kifka wrong 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 direction and that's about it the fighting at Tabaifka is not mentioned at all uh, today so uh, in, or at least the past 24 hours and I'm uh, moving into the Belgorod front uh Belgorod front the rush there's the big news uh so no i put it all the way to the end so most of you probably will not see it haha <laughs> too bad uh the R russian forces have counter attack and uh they the, it's unknown if this is a invasion into ukrainian territory but uh the based on the report i just read what they wrote they say that the russians unit inflicted losses on manpower and hardware uh as they struck uh the russian volunteer corps and then i uh, uh, and then uh, near Popivka, Lukashevka, Velikan Pasarivka, and uh, Staritsia. So, <clears throat> so it could be a possibility that it could be a ground offensive. It could be just purely a uh, fire attack. But Staritsia is over here. And then there is attack over at... Uh, this, what is this name again? I forgot. Lukashevka, uh, Velikan Pasarivka, as well as this uh, Popivka. So this is the main area of fighting. Uh, that you know, the hill that the these Russian volunteers choose to die. I'm not sure why they choose to attack there like so vehemently. It could be the case where they they are, they are actually from Graveron. The, the, these Russians are all previously living in Graveron, so you no know, they 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 get uh, influence uh, 
by the Ukrainian culture, you know, the rich, deep Ukrainian history and culture, and they feel like they are more Ukrainian than Russian. No, sorry, that, that actually def defeat the entire you know, narrative that no, they want to be Russian. Uh, yeah, yeah, just lame, just a stupid, stupid uh, narrative. Anyway, um, so and then the the, the one at Staricia is actually more interesting. Uh, the because why is that an attack in this direction? The 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 fighting uh, reporter at Novaya Tovazanka was a uh, wrong color. Was actually very minor. Uh, the the attack was only one day on the twelfth. So the Russians attack at uh, attack uh the Russian forces. I'm oh, sorry, Russian Russian Ukrainian forces at the Staricia is very uh. Interesting. That means there might be some forces that was uh, around this area here that was preparing to attack or launch another raid into uh, Russian territory and then they got discovered. That is a possibility. So, um, so yeah, the Russians have counterattacked. And then there is also a, a bombing on uh, on the Ukrainian position over at Kriyaniv, uh, over this location, uh, just off the border as well. So the, the entire offensive, as I mentioned, is pretty much gone. There is still a tempted raid into Kozinka, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. They say that uh, there is still you no know, attempt to infiltrate into the Russian side near Kozinka, and uh, this was wiped out. Uh, so we will wait and see you know, how long more do will the Ukrainians continue to try to infiltrate. And for those that say that, no, they are Russians, then... No, uh, they already joined the Ukrainian side. They are they already betrayed their country. That's all I can say. So anyway, uh, and uh, over in the Sumi front, uh, there is no fighting or uh, being reported except of the Joe location of FPV drone hitting Ukrainian forces over at Rezif uh, Rezifka. Uh, so yeah, this is near Tekino. Uh, this so this this uh this area could be a possibility that the the Ukrainian forces. Actually, it's gathered at uh, Rizivka and the word they were attacking in Tokino towards from the south, uh, which is where the, this is the Russian border. So it could be the where they set off the attack from. So which is why the drone strike was actually at Rizivka. So that's a possibility. So you know some news about this. Interesting. I think that's about it. Uh, that's all the fronts. Like now, I put it this to the end. It because uh, it it is not effectively not really a russian counter attack uh, but they are claiming to be attacking back into the ukrainian territory but although they have been hitting the ukrainian territory anyway all the time so yeah so that's why you know it's not that big of a deal yet so uh that's it this is the summary for the day of uh, 754 for the 18th of march do press the like button subscribe i realize i just i didn't say it earlier so you no know, most of you guys are gone yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next update.